Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. And without an ado that is further, let's jump right into it. The Cardano network is set to deploy a new cryptographic primitive that will improve the interoperability of the blockchain. The upcoming upgrade will make it easier for developers to build cross-chain applications in a more secure ecosystem. In a blog post, a representative of the Cardano team explained that Input Output Global added new built-in functions to Plutus, Cardano's original cryptographic storage system. This additional addition, there we go, <laughs> will enable Plutus to support ECDSA and Schnorr signatures, cryptographic systems popular with other blockchains, according to the blog post. This fresh development will allow developers on Cardano to use a wider range of multi-signature or threshold signature designers natively on Cardano. Of, of course, that's what that means. Therefore, developers will no longer have to expose their systems to external security threats achieving interoperability. The time and resources they commit to the development processes will also reduce significantly. This is currently a variation of the cryptographic algorithm implemented by Cardano and those of other prominent blockchains. The Cardano blockchain deploys the Edward Curve Digital Signature Algorithm EDDSA with elliptic curve 25519 as its base curve, aka ED25519. This algorithm is behind the network's... <laughs> I'm sorry. Just... The, point of the, the point of the matter is... Uh, Cardano is by far, now I don't know if this is true, but I'm going on like based off of news basically every day or every other day. Uh, Cardano is the most developed on blockchain in the entire, uh, Northern Universal Hemisphere. Uh, just basically because every time that there's a Cardano upgrade, there's like seven more that are also following it. So remember, there was one at the end of January, and then there was one on Valentine's Day. And I, I made a joke. I was like, well, let's get ready for the next one. So this doesn't have a name. It's just called a new cryptographic primitive. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean in English. But it's happening. And there's going to be another one that's happening on it. And then by the time we get to like March 7th, I'm certain Cardano is going to have another upgrade and update because that's just what Cardano does. Cardano's there for the people. They're like, hey, you're not happy that Bitcoin only has two upgrades a year? Well, have 117. And then if you like that, that's the blockchain for you. So I'm super excited for Edwards Curve Digital Signature Algorithm Elliptic Curve 25519 at its base curve. That, that's the upgrade I've been waiting for all this time. And yeah, let's move on. Also, in so apparently this is definitely happening now. I, I I I don't know what else to say. Hong Kong will be earmarking 6.4 million U.S. dollars for developing its Web3 ecosystem, according to its 2023-2024 budget published on Wednesday. Uh, for those of you who missed the last two and a half weeks of the channel, I'm disappointed. Why would you do that? But also in the news, um, Hong Kong has, I don't even know where this came from. So the news was, is that uh, China doesn't like blockchain or crypto or something of the sort. I don't know, something weird. But Hong Kong announced at the middle of January that they're trying to become the leader in Asia of cryptocurrencies. So not blockchain. I mean, of course, blockchain is a part of it, but they're like, they want to be the spot to go to for cryptocurrency trading. I think, I think, I think they also have a 0% tax rate for crypto. So that's also going to, you know, be a really big thing for them in the future. And then on top of that, they keep announcing over and over that these things are going to happen. I, I dug deeper. So like aside from the cryptocurrency news and stuff like that, but I was looking like, is this actually going to happen? And apparent allegedly, 
Um, it appears that the North is like a okay with it, and they actually even want them to do it to go along with the plans. And it's confusing because if you know history or what happened in the 60s and 70s and what's currently happening right now and what's happening 15 years too early, you would be taken aback because you kind of assume that, you know, this would not be taking place. But alas, here we are. So apparently not only is this happening, but Hong Kong is going to be allocating $6.4 million into the Web3 ecosystem. The funds will go towards organizing major international seminars cross-sectoral business cooperation and workshops for young people. Wow! Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan, also announced the start of a task force dedicated to development of virtual assets composed of members from Policy Bureau, that's with an X, regulatory bodies and industry. Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission published its proposed rules for virtual assets on Monday. The city's chief executive, John Lee, announced in his policy address in October that the government would start a new investment company called Hong Kong Investment Corporation Limited. Okay, a little brooding. The government is also setting aside... Is... What? Really? Wow, okay. Uh, $3.8 billion for a co-investment fund focused on attracting new local, non-local businesses to Hong Kong. And I guess the way you get there is with 0%... Uh, taxation. You know what's really weird? A lot of countries are trying to do this right now. So after um, C19, uh huh, um, a lot of countries thought that their uh, tourism would, you know, roar back, but it hasn't turned out to be that way. And I assume it's because inflation's like 98%, and a lot of people would probably rather eat than get on a plane right now but it's you know so anyway that's just another little side note this is why I th so if you look into actual like financial news uh not only are companies firing people but countries around the world are like desperate to get people to go uh fly to their countries and spend money but if everybody's broke at the same time you can't really just expect people to be like let me go spend my extra dollar over there anyway that's the apparently this is happening so the news that we got last was the 1st of June for the, uh, what's your Jaggers? For this law to go into effect for cryptocurrencies to be legal in Hong Kong. Uh, when it happens, once again, we will most certainly be hearing about it because this has been one of the most popular news stories over the last couple of weeks. Fantastic. And yeah. Let's move on. So I call this news, just do it. Just, just stop talking about it. David Schwartz, chief technology officer at Ripple, has hinted, wink, that the blockchain payments company could consider shuttering its operations in the United States. The Ripple executive and XRP ledger designer did this in a tweet the other day. It came in response to speculation over an ominous tweet, ooh, where he noted that the firm could be tempted to walk through a door and slam it shut. He said, I hope we don't get into a position where we're tempted to walk through a door and slam it behind us. In his latest tweet, Schwartz, while noting that it would not be his preferred outcome, hinted the company could leave the United States if left with no choice. Schwartz asserted, that there was more to the world, it's true, and that Congress could always change the status quo. He said, I hope we don't run into a situation where we have to make any choice like that. Keep in mind, while the stakes are high, they're not quite as high as this suggests. After all, this is only the United States. There's quite a bit more to the world, and Congress can change the laws. And here's the tweet for it right here. Um, do it. Just, just, just stop playing at, at this point. Uh, U.S. regulators, from my vantage point, are so much more corrupt than I had previously assumed, and I thought that regulators regulated, but instead they're trying to actively push companies and brain drain the company, country, uh, so that other larger entities such as Fidelity and BlackRock can have control over the entirety of of the space. It's just basic level A corruption. Um, but 
The people from Ripple mentioned this a couple of years ago that they were thinking of leaving the U.S. I think they tried to do it as a as a as an old tomato. I know the words ultimatum uh, to the SEC. I, I I made that joke one time at a party. I'm not even joking. I was like, yeah, it was a really like it was a really weird old tomato, and they were like, a what? I was like, it was an old tomato. Do you, do you mean ultimatum? And they 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 literally thought I was the dumbest human being on the entire planet. So now I every time I make a joke, I have to be like, I'm joking because people people don't understand jokes. They made the the the, the assumption years ago. And I think it was them trying to uh, move some weight around against the SEC to be like, if you don't, if you don't help us, Ripple's gonna leave. And then they got sued like a day and a half later. So I think Ripple would thrive, like literally live their best life and thrive if they simply left the United States. As it stands right now, the lawsuit's been going on for like two years and some change. They've partnered with multiple other countries around the world. There are, what was like, 20 plus companies who are actively now using XRP. None of them, of course, inside of the United States. Uh, also, we know that legally, U.S. companies can relist XRP and none of them have done so. How do we know that? Because at the beginning of 2021, the SEC came forward and said that their lawsuit was against Ripple, the company, and not the XRP token, and that crypto exchanges were free to do what they wanted with the actual token as well. So I would do it. I would I would open up. Anyway, that's just me personally because, yeah, that's the David Schwartz, the creator of the XRP ledger and one of the top people at Ripple was like, hey, I hope we don't got to do it, but we might got to do it. I don't think they will. I I, I feel like they're... Not the words not afraid. I think a lot of people hang on desperately to things that the United States does in hoping that eventually they'll do the right thing or that things will kind of resolve themselves. And as it is like the money market maker on the planet, I think these companies are like, okay, any day now we'll have regulations. Any day now this lawsuit will end. Crypto's been around for 14 years and nothing has changed. So, you know. The U.S. might not have regulations for another seven years. Like, what happens to these companies who just kind of, you know, waste time there? We'll see. I I would have so much more respect for them, but also I'm not running a a multi billion dollar company, so they don't even care what I think. That's the Ripple might leave the U.S. news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also, this is this belongs in stupid news. I don't know how this guy is managing to push this nonsense forward all the time, all the time. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson has responded to claims made by a Twitter user, Ross Calvin, that he is forming a joint venture to buy CNN. Yep, that's CNN. Hoskinson replied uncertainly, I can't confirm or deny, end quote, If true, it's not. Such intentions may bode well for the crypto industry. They probably wouldn't. I also, listen, I don't want to be part of an industry where someone can just buy the news and then make good news for us. Doesn't that sound terrible? What about equality and democracy? Yeah, see, some people forgot about that one. If if he's able to buy CNN, which he's not, and then simply give us good news to make our industry pump... That, that doesn't sound mighty democratic. He said, I can't confirm or deny. On the other hand, the Twitter responses to the Cardano founder's reply might imply that the speculation should be taken with a pinch of salt. No, 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 no. Take, take that little grain of salt and throw it right into the toilet. And you see how it disappears? That. That's what you get. And a better question to ask is if CNN is for sale. Guess what? It's not. So I'm not, once again, I'm not sure how Hoskinson keeps doing this. He manages to get into the news every single day. He's either fighting with himself. He's screaming at somebody for saying something. Somebody in like 1992 was like, Cardano's a bad blockchain. And then he goes on a rant on YouTube in a video and then it ends up making popular news. I, I think at this point, it's almost like, I, eh, eh, <laughs> It's not meant to be. It almost, but it seems now quite comedic. 
Uh, he's in the news as much as Justin's son used to be in the news uh, back in the olden days of crypto, which was like every single day. I don't know. Listen, dude, Charles Hoskinson is not buying CNN. I don't think he has the money to buy CNN. And CNN also is not for sale. I don't know how to make that any clearer. Like there's no, there's no, I don't know why this was even remotely popular news. Or why he just didn't tell the truth. Be like, I can't confirm or deny. I'm, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you can do one of the two because one is the truth and the other one isn't. Anyway, uh, this belongs in stupid news because he's going to be back in the news again tomorrow like he has every single day. And I'm not sure how he's doing it. If I could, if I could get into the news as often as Hoskinson, I'd have like million view videos every single day. But alas, you know. I think a lot of people don't like the truth. That's the Charles Hoskinson can't confirm or deny if he's buying CNN. He's not. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, the Bank of Japan, the BOJ, is preparing to launch a pilot test for a digital yen it's central bank digital currency later on this year. What? That's that's crazy. Shinichi Uchida, executive director of the Bank of Japan, explained that the goal of this new pilot is to test the technical feasibility of the currency. It's not going to work out. And to include private businesses in its design process. The Bank of Japan is advancing its research for the issuance of a hypothetical wink. Japanese central bank digital currency, the digital yen, on the 17th of February. Shinuchi Uchida, executive director of the Bank of Japan, announced the bank had decided to launch a new pilot for the digital yen as a continuation of two phases of a proof of concept test. Remember what I told you at the beginning of the year? Today's the year. Today's the year. This is the year. Yay! Where all the governments are supposed to be launching their central bank digital currencies, but they're doing it. Why'd I scream? But they're doing it in a... um in a light-handed fashion because they've realized that a lot of other countries who have launched a digital yen, uh, their citizens aren't using it. So the other way to get people to use it, wink, is to make sure that gigantic companies, private businesses, if you will, are actually using the digital yen. The idea being is that if citizens don't want to use it actively themselves, I will not pay you in a digital Japanese yen if I make a payment to Tencent or some other gigantic other company, what have you, that company would then only transact in this new digital currency. And that's a way for them to inflate numbers and be like, look, people are, people are actively using it. This is happening in the country that is above Hong Kong right now. They're always in the news. You can, you can find tons of news about people using the digital yuan and how the airdrops are going great. Like they, they literally have to airdrop this onto people and give it to them for free for them to use it, and no one is. No one wants to use the gosh darn thing. And also, once again, our money is already digital. How many of you, and I? What, what, there's gonna be like five people at least. How many of you are actively still using cash? Once again, the, the, the five of you, can you, put, you can put your hand down so I get it. But it's like, these, these countries are so obsessed with control, and this is the point of digitizing the currency. Uh, but now they're all supposed to be, I'm, I'm very excited. Like I'm actively excited because they're all going to be launching them over the course of this year. So by the time we get to 2028, it should be abundantly clear uh, whether people are using them, not using them, or are forced to use them. That's going to be something else. Uchida said the new pilot will focus its activities in two directions. The first will be the fine tuning of the technical aspects of the currency. In order to test new use cases and integrate the system with other structures, he he declared, okay, that's intense. We plan to develop a system for experiments where a central system, intermediary network system, intermediary systems, and endpoint devices would be configured in an integrated manner. The, the word, all right, there was a lot of intermediary and integrated words there. The point is, cool, wonderful, awesome. Can't wait for it. I'm not going to use it. I'm also not in Japan, so I can't really you know use it actively at this very moment. So wonderful. That's the another country has announced the creation, implementation, procrastination of the nation of Japan central bank. <laughs> I was trying to rhyme. Central bank currency news. Uh, sure, why not? I wonder. I wonder what. Hmm. I wonder what the masses would choose to use 
if by 2028 we actually did get to a million dollar Bitcoin, uh, would people, I mean, probably. I think at that point, I'd probably also be trying to transact in Bitcoin. All right, we'll see. The future's going to happen eventually. Okay. Let's move on. Also in the news is, New York-based cryptocurrency company Paxos Trust Company is apparently in constructive talks with the, I almost said something uh, really mean, with the U.S. SEC following enforcement actions surrounding stablecoin Binance U.S. dollar. According to a report from Reuters, an internal email from Paxos's CEO Charles Cascarilla said the SEC is actively in discussions with Paxos after the regulator told the company that it should have registered BUSD as a security, telling them two weeks ago as opposed to about three and a half years ago when they should have. We are engaged in constructive discussions with the SEC and we look forward to continuing the dialogue in private. Listen, how much, how much do you want to bet this all has to do with a briefcase full of money sliding over a table to the other side. How, listen, I have a very strange feeling. I have a very strange feeling. Somebody in Paxos didn't bend the knee. I'm sure they were registered. They were, they were based in New York. That tells me they had an office. They filled out paperwork. They were legally there. How much do you want to bet the SEC just wants a gigantic slice of the pie. And then by April, we will hear that Paxos is minting Binance US dollars again. I have a very strange feeling. Both the SEC and Paxos declined to comment on the email. In a statement released on the 13th of February, Paxos said it had received a Wells notice. From the SEC on the 3rd of February with the regulator stating that it is considering recommending an action alleging that the Binance US dollar is a security, which it is not, and that Paxo should have registered the offering of Binance's US dollar. Wait, so that would mean that every other coin is also, that would mean every other stable coin is also a security. Weird how we haven't heard about this news from Coinbase's Circle or Tether or the Gemini US dollar. Hmm. I guess maybe Binance was the only one doing something wrong. That's the Paxos is apparently talking with um, people about how to put... Mm, I'll stop talking. That's the Paxos news. And yeah, let's move on. Also in... All right. Mainstream crypto... And crypto-based services adoption continues with more companies bridging tri 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 TradFi, traditional finance. That, okay, that sounds stupid. Solutions with DeFi. TradFi? Why not like TiFi or TraFi? In an announcement on the 22nd of February, a new pilot program launched between the crypto exchange Binance and credit card service company Ingenico allows in-store crypto purchases via Binance Pay. Currently, the initial test of this offering is only available on Ingenico Axiom payment terminals in France. What? According to the announcement, the program accepts more than 50 cryptocurrencies. Initially, merchants will be paid in crypto. However, a crypto to fiat solution allowing merchants to receive fiat payments is set to pilot in the quarter two of this year. I appreciate that everyone's trying to make these payment rails, but no one, huh, the 99% of other people in crypto aren't using these coins as, as a payment method. I don't understand, like, we can't do this in, like, 2027. You, you know, like, Binance has partnered with, like, 8,000 companies at this point who are all using Binance Pay, but is anyone, is, is, it, is anyone actually using Binance Pay? I understand the idea of issuing a Visa card. That I get. If you have a Visa card attached to your Binance account or a Visa card attached to your Coinbase or Kraken, whatever the other stuff that's out there, that makes sense because you can actively just directly use the crypto that you have 
you know, in visa form, bam, tap my car, you know, you're paying for that amount. But, okay, the French pilot is going live with two merchants, Le Carly and Miss Opera, in the hospital, Miss Opera? Okay, in the hospitality and retail sectors, I've never heard of either one of those things. Additionally, European countries where Binance is an approved crypto operator are next on the list for service expansion. Binance is approved in France, Italia, Lithuania, Espana, Cyprus, Poland, and Sweden. So, cool. I feel like I, should I, should I know what Ingenico Axiom payment is? I don't think I've ever seen that. Anyway, that's the Binance has partnered with another company trying to get people to use cryptocurrencies. But I think we have a couple more years before people actively use their cryptocurrencies because nobody wants to sell their cryptocurrencies too early before it could be worth a couple years later. News. And yeah. Fantastic. Let's move on. Also in what? There's no way that they would do that. The Canadian Securities Administration, the CSA, fancy got new letters, made up of security regulators from each of the 10 provinces and three territories in Canada, has published a long list of new requirements for crypto companies wishing to stay legally compliant. And stablecoin platforms are clearly at the top of the list. Crypto asset trading platforms within the country will now be prohibited from allowing customers to buy or deposit stable. You understand what this this is? This is what I'm talking about. Doesn't it seem a little weird that all this hate is now coming out about stable coins the exact same year when every country is trying to launch their central bank digital currency? No one, no one sees this all lining up. Okay. Crypto asset trading platforms within the country will now be prohibited from allowing customers to buy or deposit stable coins or other value referenced crypto assets or Verocas, VRCAs, without the CSA's prior written consent. I'm sorry, what? Crypto planning. You will not be able to buy a stable coin, to buy or deposit a stable coin without the Canadian Securities Administration's written consent. What year is this? Oh, the 1920s. I'm so sorry. I'm so stupid. Obtaining consent means meeting the administration's many due diligence requirements, including ensuring that the stable coin is fiat backed. They said for greater un- for greater certainty, we would not expect to provide consent in respect of a VRCA that is not fully backed by an appropriate reserve, but rather maintains its value through an algorithm, they said on Wednesday. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies, yada, yada, yada. Canadian regulators prefer to use the term Veruca. However, as many so-called stable coins have not been so stable in the past, last May, don't, don't use Terra as like the only, listen, there's a whole bunch of other crap out there as well. More traditional fiat-based stable coins such as Tether, uh, Coinbase's coin, and Binance's dollar have reserves to offer constant convertibility for their tokens or retain a stable price. I mean... <sighs> We've just kind of gotten to the point where the regulators are, I mean, in full force trying to be as, as the word is corrupt. There's no other word. I try and always find a different word, but that's, we all know exactly what's going on. So, I mean, is is there a silver lining here? At least, um, Canada has snow. That's the Canadian regulators say no to algorithmic stable coins. The timing is just, you know, adding up greatly. So I maybe somebody didn't pass a briefcase along the along the table. I'm not really sure I wasn't there. All right. Let's move on. Like I, I can't wait until these things all launch. Like no one's got, countries are so ridiculous. Like this this idea of of mon like tight, insane monetary control is so overboard, like what would they do if, if everyone on the planet simply just used a decentralized system? Like, what would they literally do? I think that that's going to do it for this video. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all have... What? Hope you... 
like, comment, subscribe, enjoy the video. Thank you all once again for... I forgot what, what, what I normally say. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or... Look at her skipping the line. Slowly as well. Jeez, Louise, she has no shame. Do you see this? Oh, she ran to the front. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will uh, most certainly uh, be talking to you all soon. Ciao.